Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you for joining me. Today we are adding to the Distress Ink and Oxide series and we are looking at Spiced Marmalade. We are so far through the range now. I fully intend on getting every colour uploaded eventually. We're working through it alphabetically. If you've not seen any of the previous videos already, you can check out the playlist and find them all there up to the S's. Um, we won't be long before we'll be through, through all of them and then I'm going to be doing another series of Distress Inks and Oxides as well that I'm hoping you will join me for too. Now we're going to be first of all swatching this colour, having a look at what it's really like when it's swatched onto white cardstock or paper. We're going to be comparing it to other oranges in the range and then we're going to be doing two gorgeous colour combinations with it as well. Everything that I'm using today is linked down in the description below. I get a lot of questions about where I get my brushes from, the where you download the colour chart, etc, etc. It's all linked there for you, everybody. Just scroll through the description uh, and you'll find everything. So first things first, what does Spice Marmalade really look like on to white? Well, let's take a look. It is a beautiful, deep and bright orange colour. Um, I can't say that this there's anything more like a true orange within the oxide range or even ink and oxide range. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's a very, very warm colour, of course. And I really love the fade that you get. You can see the base of yellow in there too. So just filling in, making sure I'm going around in circles, getting a nice solid colour for you there, fading that out a little bit so we can do our first colour blend in a moment look at that absolutely beautiful color now comparing it to the label i think that's virtually spot on really isn't it it's really really close now with the label in case you didn't realize the labels on oxides and inks are actually because they're water reactive ink these are created to look like uh, they've been reacted with water you'll find the bottom left hand corner the top right hand corner is the solid color and in between are all the different shades and tones that you're going to get when you mix these with water, just as an example for you. Obviously, we're looking at solid colour at the moment. Now, also comparing to the ink pad, that's pretty accurate as well. Sometimes the ink pad really looks very different to uh, what the actual swatch looks like. So I find that really interesting, actually. But let's now take a look at other oranges in the range. So we're looking at really just this sheet. Now this is filled in at home, but you can print out the blank chart uh, on my website. Again, links down below. If you scroll through, see the word free in bold, big capital letters, um, and that's where you'll find the link to my blog and to the free downloads. There's lots of different downloads, which include things like the labels as well, both in color and in black. And you'll also find an overview chart that is already filled in for you that you can print off and keep as a reference at home. So now I've put a smudge of orange there. So we'll just have to see what happens with that once we get blending with our first combination. So we are looking at spiced marmalade at the top. Now I have laminated my um, sheets here and they're actually a frosted laminate. So they might look a little bit, uh, well, frosty, a little bit um, misted, I suppose, a little bit. Um, and you get that cloudy look. So the spiced marmalade here isn't quite as bright as the one that I've just inked, but it's not far off. Now, Ripe Persimmon has a lot more red in it. It's more of a coral colour. It's got a pinky hue to it. Um, equally as deep and dark, but yeah, you can see there, it's definitely got more of the reds in it. Dried Marigold is definitely much more of a muted tone, a much softer orange. But Carved Pumpkin, now I've always wondered this. In fact, I'm going to bring the actual uh, ink pad in because Carved Pumpkin, I feel, is extremely similar. And I really don't ever see a huge amount of difference in it. Looking at this, it looks like Carved Pumpkin is a little bit brighter, a little, um, in fact, comparing the two, yeah, just a little bit brighter, but not a huge amount. So definitely, if you want to do these colour combinations, but you don't have Spiced Marmalade, you could opt for Carved Pumpkin in place of it. Uh, going down into really the yellows here, so Wild Honey is much lighter and more yellow. We're actually going to use this in first combination and then, yeah, definitely into the yellows. So but it's um, amazing that Carved Pumpkin is so similar. So let's get on with our first colour combination. We've already got 
our uh, spiced marmalade on the end here. So let's go next with wild honey, as I was saying. We're going to bring this into the middle. So the first color combination is going to be, um, I call it tonal, um, but basically going through these oranges and giving you a dark to light, including that spiced marmalade. Look how beautifully that color has blended onto there. Now, because I did this a little while ago, I'm just going to top up the spiced marmalade a little. So going onto the solid color first with my uh, brush there, and then dragging that color in small circles up into the wild honey. You can barely see a transition line there. It's so beautiful. Lovely. Okay, so now I'm going to give this a little wipe. I'm just going to turn it over so we're working on a dry surface. And we're going to go into fossilised amber on the end here. So like I say, we have got a little smudge of some orange there. I don't know where it's come from. <laughs> Could be anywhere. But at least it's in an orange. So let's see if we overlay that. We'll probably still see it through a little bit, I'd imagine. So fossilised amber is a lovely warm yellow. Let's just build this up over that smudge line. Yeah, that's not going anywhere, is it? It's still there. Never mind. And then I'm going to come back with what's left on my brush from the wild honey and just go back over that joining line. You can barely see it. But there, although that just needs to dry, you can see, so if I hold that up to the light, you can see the damper patches there are much darker. That will all fade into a beautiful blend. Uh, you won't see any of those lines at all. It will just look lovely and smooth and flawless when it's dried, all except the little orange line there um, but yeah so there's a lovely orange into yellow beautiful transitions um, really like that so that's a fossilized amber wild honey and spiced marmalade so let's move on now with spiced marmalade onto a second color combination this time using four different colors now we're going to bring in a contrasting color and that means I'm not going to just stick with the warms but I'm also going to bring in cools as well and these are in some beautiful teals and greens. So I'm going to start with ripe persimmon. I really love this combination. I really, really like mixing at the moment oranges or warm browns with teals. It's one of my favorite kind of combinations to do at the moment. You'll see lots of these across the playlist. Uh, things like rusty hinge, I'm sure I probably did so with that. Um, but yeah, you'll find, take a look, have a browse one day, sit and have a mooch through all the different color combinations. Uh, hopefully you'll be inspired by some of them. Then going from ripe persimmon into spiced marmalade. So as you can see, I'm always laying down the solid color first, and then I'm worrying about the blend lines afterwards. I don't want to be trying to put solid color down directly onto the blend line because you know it's just too much. There's no way I'm going to be able to blend that out. And then coming back with what's left on my brush still with ripe persimmon and going over that join. Look at how those two have just worked so, so beautifully into each other. Now, going into a teal isn't always the easiest. I'm going to come back into the solid and try to do some of the blending, some of the fading of spiced marmalade now. Gently fading that up a little bit. And see we almost get this sort of yellow color coming through I'll come back to that salvaged patina now so really loading my brush up because this is a paler color and I do think the spice marmalade is probably going to um, overrule it quite a lot being a stronger color let's just wipe my mat as well and give it a dry so again, salvage patina, I'm going to put down the solid color first. I'm not thinking about blending yet. Let's just get that color on where we want it first of all. I'm going to add a touch of darker color to the end there. That's going to be the lucky clover that I've got sat there. 
Okay, so now I'm going to start thinking about blending. So with what's on my brush at the moment, I'm starting to work slowly into that those that sort of yellow where we faded out the uh, spiced marmalade. Up and down or back and forth, whichever way you want to look at it, left to right, um, into the yellow in tiny circles, always working in circles. I'm working my way down. There we go. And then I'm going to come back up again, which could drag a little bit of the yellow up. There we go. There. That wasn't too bad, was it? That wasn't too hard at all. I'm not going to work any more at that. I think you can sometimes overwork blends and you end up almost just separating them completely. Um, you can see I've got a little bit of additional sort of the uh, the salvage patina kind of comes along and then down here. So I could take a little bit of this, go back into the solid first. So my solid strip of the spice marmalade is around here. Gently work that up just a little. There, that's kind of evened that out just a little bit. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to go Lucky Clover just on the end here. This is a strong colour. And I like to put a nice dark strong colour on the ends rather than sort of in the middle. There we go, just that little bit. And because like I say it is a strong colour I'll come back in with a little of my salvage patina back into the solid line and then work my way up into that Lucky Clover. There we go, happy with that there. Isn't that beautiful? So you can go from warms to cools really quite easily. And that one's just still drying a little bit. Oxides can take a little while to dry. I just think that looks absolutely stunning. This one would look amazing with the water splats on it to give it that mottled look as well. And actually, it's surprising how similar fossilised amber and uh, wild honey are as well. So there you go, there's two new combinations for you to try. Of course, don't forget to check out the entire playlist just here. And I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel just here as well. So take care, everybody. I will see you again very soon for another Distressing Canoxide Colour Combination video.